Memory is a fun game that you may have played in real life with actual paper tiles. It's called that because the main skill in the game is your memory, how well you can remember the position of tiles. It's also a game that can be recreated on a computer like this, and is a good example of using computer memory to remember information with, like with arrays. As you can see, I can click to flip over tiles, and the goal of the game is to remember where tiles were and then match them later on. Once we're done, this is what the game should look like. And now I'm going to just clear this code and start from scratch. To make the game, we will need to recreate the physical parts of the game using our drawing commands and implement the rules of the game using variables and logic. We will make a single player version of the game for now, which will simplify some of the logic. And I'm going to paste in an outline of what we'll implement here. The game consists of an even number of tiles with images on one side and a generic back. Each image appears on precisely two tiles. When the game starts, all tiles are turned face down. The player then flips over two cards, selecting by clicking on them. If the two tiles have the same image, they remain face up because they matched. Otherwise, the, the tiles will flip back over after a small period of time. The goal of the game is to get all the tiles flipped face up or find all the matching image pairs in the least number of tries. That means that a lower number of tries is a better score. The first step of playing the memory game is to randomly shuffle all the tiles and then lay them out in a rectangular grid face down so that we can't see which image is on the other side of each tile. To start off in programming the game, let's just worry about creating face down tiles and figure out how to do the different images later on. The tile is an important enough object in the game of memory that we will use object-oriented principles to define a tile object and then create multiple instances of it. So here's the tile constructor. I'm actually going to have some X and Y arguments in here. So let's see. Each tile needs an X because we're going to be positioning these in a Y as well. But I'm also going to add a constant property in here, which is width. This is going to be equal to 70 pixels. And we'll use that to draw the tiles with the same width and height so that they're all the same. And now that we've defined a constructor, we can use that in a loop to create tiles at approximate X and Y positions. In fact, we'll use two for loops, or a nested for loop, as that makes it conceptually easy to generate coordinates for a grid. We'll start off by initializing an empty tiles array here. Tiles equals empty array. And first, what I'm going to do is make the nested for loop. But to kind of simplify things, I'm going to define two variables here called number of columns and number of rows. These will be used in the for loops so that I don't have to, so that I can change the numbers a little bit easier. So here we go, i is less than number of columns. So the outer loop will loop through the number of columns and then the inner loop will loop through the number of rows, j. We actually need to use two var different variables here since we'll use both of them to iterate and push new objects to this array. So j is less than number of rows, j++. plus plus. All right. And now what, what are we going to actually do in here? Well, we need to add new tiles to this tiles array. So what we can do is type tiles.push new tile. And then, of course, give each object that we push to the tiles array an X and a Y position. And since I and J are being iterated and changed each loop, we can use those for the positions. I times 78 plus 10 and J times 78 plus 40. All right, there we go. But uh, it's hard to know what the tiles will look if <laughs> we don't know what the tiles look like yet because we don't actually have any code to draw them. 
In fact, maybe we should have done that first. Sometimes in programming, it's hard to know what to do first, eh? Now, let's add a method to the tile object that draws a tile face down on the canvas. So tile dot prototype dot draw, wait, draw face down will work. Equals function. All right. And then in here, I'm just gonna display some tiles here. So a nice light green will work. 214, 247, 202. And I'm gonna also use a stroke, stroke weight. No, not, not stroke. We already have a stroke. Stroke weight is going to be two. It's gonna be a little thicker of an outline. And then of course the background or the, the tile itself will be a rectangle at this dot x, this dot y, this dot width, this dot width again, so that the width and height are the same number. And we're gonna also include a radius uh, value for the radius parameter, which will be 10. This will round the edges of the rectangle. And also include an image. Since this is the back side of the, of the card or tile, or it'll just be a simple green leaf. And excuse that scroll. The image picker does that. Okay. I'm also going to position this at this dot x and this dot y with a width of this dot width and the same for the height. Okay. And now we just need to iterate through again in a new for loop and draw these. So for var i equals equals zero, i is less than tiles dot length i plus plus. Now let's hold on for a second and kind of think about what the length of tiles might be. Well, we have we're right here in these this nested for loop. We're pushing new objects to the tiles array, but how many times? Well, let's see. In the inner loop, we're pushing. Let's see, four, four new objects to the tiles array. But we're also doing this operation five times in this in this outer array, uh, for loop. So altogether, we're actually doing five times four or 20 iterations. So we're pushing 20, 20 objects to the tiles array. And to prove this, I can just print len the length of the tiles array. And we see that we get 20. This is because, uh, just, just like I explained, that 5 times 4 equals 20. We can always think like that with nested for loops. And uh, println is a nice function. We can print data like that to the canvas. So I'll remove that for now and actually draw the tiles. So tiles, oops, tiles i dot draw face down. And there we go. We get to see all, all of our tiles. Those look really nice. I'm actually going to play around with these numbers a little bit just to see what they do. Very cool. This draws the number of columns and this draws the number of rows. In the next video, we're going to work on drawing the images on the face up sides of these tiles as well. And we're going to work on adding interactivity so that the user can flip these and click on them. See you in the next video.